Hallelujah. For those that are watching us from home, please welcome. We are so glad that God, regardless in spite of 2020 Congress Conference, is here. For you that were asking, are we going to have it? Here it is. Hallelujah. The devil thought we will not have it, but we are having Actually, the theme is restoration during crisis. In other words, we are going to be conquerors even with the crisis in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Look at your neighbor while you are still having your mask on. Smile at them, nod at them, meaning it is going to happen and it cannot be otherwise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We may get seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. What a way. What a way. What a way to start our Congress conference. What a worship, if you like. That was awesome. I, I know that on the Sunday services at Kwagi Namuda Kama Huo, you know? Lakini, naya mungu ni nani? Tumekua na lisa lizima hapa la kumtukuza huyo mungu aishie milele. Bwana Yesu wasifiwe. You know, when, when the theme of this conference was being cooked, and then finally it, it, it landed on my table, restoration during crisis, restoration during crisis, restoration during crisis. And I, whatever I prepared in the morning was an answer for despair. And we said, you can do more than you think. Yes, you can do more uh, than you think. But for this evening, is also God still answering us? It's God's answer to crisis or God's answer in crisis, God's answer during crisis because God has an answer for us. You know, God is not like a human being who is shocked when things happen. He's not shocked. Because already he has a plan for it. But you know, sometimes we know the Bible verse too well, like I told you about the verse that we used in the service. Strange as it may sound, we can even memorize a verse and still miss the truth that God wants us to know. Like we saw in the morning, that, that one verse had a lot of truth in it, and I pray that God is going to help us even as we journey on. So we, and, and this happens, and it is also the same with the text that we are going to, to look at. You see, when we think about our God, and the way he knows us, and the way he loves us, and the way he forgives us, and the way he would never leave us alone, and the way that he has a way for us in everything that happens, then that gives us hope and confidence that it doesn't matter the situation and circumstance. If God is in it, you remember there was one point I said, if God is in your difficulty, if God is in your challenge, if God is in your sickness, then God is going to bring healing because he has a way and he's a way maker. The verse that we are going to look is found, and this one you also know very well, like you did the first one. This is Jeremiah 29, verse 11. What does it say? Oh, what? For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. The thoughts that I'm thinking about you are thoughts of peace and not of evil. It doesn't matter where I find myself in this coronavirus movement. The Lord has good thoughts for me. Most of us then know this verse and we have memorized it. And this verse, you can find it in our home. Some of us have t-shirts on it. Some of us in our fridges, we have the sticker that we stick on it that is talking about this God who has wonderful thoughts for us, who has a wonderful thought towards us, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give us a future and a hope. So this is with us. We have it. It's possible that everywhere you are, even in your Bible, you have underlined it in, in red. And you see some people looked at this verse and they wanted to do some... Um, some uh, research 
to know which verse is more particularly uh, known by people. And they discovered this verse, 2018, was number one out of two billion people that talked about it. Number one, two billion. In, you can imagine people thinking about it. We will never understand this verse unless we know something about his background. You know, we will never understand the, the, the success, the, the, the restoration that God can bring to us unless we understand the issue of coronavirus. We cannot understand what God was saying to these people until we have an idea what was the background then. What was happening then? This verse was written to the Jews exiles in Babylon who had been forcibly and taken by force from Jerusalem by a king that was called Nebuchadnezzar. Having been uprooted from all they had and they thought they were dear for them. And they were to live away from their homes for 70 years. And God had said in actual fact when God is speaking to the Jews and preparing them to go, he said, Mukienda uko, ukiona shamba, lima, ukilima, panda, ukipanda, vuna, ukivuna, kula, ukiona ploti, jenga, ukipata mawe, jenga na mawe, kwa sababu mtaka kwa muda. Watoto wenu wakiona watu wakuo wakule, wacha waolewe, na wale wanaowa waowe. In other words, he was telling them, you are going to be there for a long time. Imagine, I'm not yet 70. But in this, in this years that I've lived, I have been born and gone to school. I have married and I have children. They are having their children. And I'm not yet 70. It's a long time. I wish this was a time that we could t t tell each other and give high fives and tell ni murefu meaka 70. Hey, I see. Si miaka 70 ni mingi. Unajua wengine wenu wamjui miaka 70. Miaka 70 ni mingi. Ebu jua yako. Bas. Unaona ya miaka 70 ni mingi. Miaka 70 ni mingi. Miaka 70. They were to be there for 70 years. You see when I compare this with the situation we find ourselves. Corona we don't know for how long it's going to last. And you know. I was telling men, we met with the men leaders and I was telling them, this thing, when it happened, I was even looking for help. I called my Canadian friends and pastors to ask them, what do I do here and so on. And they all did not have an answer. Actual fact, they said, try what works in Nairobi because here where we are, we are not even meeting at all. Try what works in Nairobi. And we have tried what works in Nairobi and we bless the name of the Lord. So in other words, their dreams and the hopes were smashed. And they wondered, they even asked, how could God have allowed this to happen? If we are truly his people, how did we end up here? They wondered if God had forgotten them. They were in a crisis. And I think just like we, I, you know, the way we have been praying for this corona, we even sometimes will ask God, Yes, it is still going there, but there is something that you and I ought to know about our God. One day is like a thousand, a thousand days, a thousand years is like one day. God will always do what we expect him, what we expect him to do. God will not always, not always do what we expect him to do. But he will always do what he says he will do. That's why I was saying that chorus that we are finished with. He is God. Adonai. What he says he will do, then he will do. He is not like a man. So with that kind of background, then we can consider three things out of this verse that are going to help us in this crisis where we find ourselves. Point number one. God thinks about us all the time. Now hear me. God thinks about you. Not sometimes. He thinks about you all the time. He says this. I know the thoughts that I have towards you. God thinks about us. 
You know, God thinks about Jimmy. God thinks about you. God thinks about us all the time. That may be the most important statement you will ever hear. That God thinks about you. Where do they need you? You are not, you are not cockroach. You know, there are some people who, who even call themselves cockroaches. You are not a cockroach. Don't you remember these ten spies that looked at themselves and they called themselves, I am not a cockroach. Neither am I a grasshopper. I'm a child of the living God. I am somebody and God thinks about me. God thinks about me. I am somebody. He does not think about me for a second. No. He thinks about me all the time. He knows where I am all the time. You know, you know some of us have to keep on calling each other. You know that kind of a call. And then you have to say where you are. And then you stay for another minute. Maybe you are in a jam. Then somebody will call you again, where are you? You know, you, you know, but God knows where I am in the middle of the jam, whether I'm sleeping at night, God knows. And I want to encourage you. God wants to restore because he knows where you are. He knows what you have lost. He knows what you need. God is knowing. He knows me. You know, we, we celebrate birthdays. But, but, uh, the only birthdays that I know are for my children and my wife, of course. But we have a larger family now where Nyambura, Mungai, and so on, they have gotten into those homes. And we, start, we have started celebrating birthdays. Yesterday we had one, but I, did, I had not remembered it until I was told today is so-and-so's birthday. No, we forget and some of you forget also. Very important days, anniversaries. You know, before, before, all right, let me not go that way. God thinks about us all the time. But some of us forget birthdays and anniversaries of others. We forget graduations, actually. Sometimes I even don't remember when I graduated in my master's. I don't. You know. <laughs> That's very interesting. Anyway, but I graduated, I have a certificate. So every time I'm looking for when I did, I go to look for the certificate. But I'm supposed to remember. <laughs> you see, I don't know whether you have gone to town on uh, Valentine Day. And you, you, you even don't know why every lady is having a red dress. You have no idea. You're just walking. And then you meet your friend. He's asking you. He's carrying a flower. And then you're asking. That's crazy. And then you tell him. Leo. Valentine. Oh, God, you know, I'm going to bouquet. I'm going to take Alice. Because, you see, many times we forget. That day passes. I remember one time I bought a bouquet. Ile ya mwisho. Zile zilikuwa zimebaki. I had to go to Westlands. Kutafuta zile zinakuwa za mwisho. Bayi ya mwisho, bayi ya mwisho, bayi ya mwisho, bayi ya mwisho. You know? I'm not saying I do it all the time. Because this year, we did not do it. I don't know whether we forgot or what, but anyway, we, those things we forget. But God does not remember. Most of us, what we remember are bad things. We remember bad things. A story is given this year, a story was given when this big ship called the Diamond a princess was quarantined at the coast of Japan for many days. Those were the days that they did not know whether it would be 14 or 21, but the ship was there for many days. Reporters were calling the guys on the ship using their mobile phone, and they talked to one person. His name is Ellis Vincent. 
He is, seven, he is 76 years, a retired airline executive from Australia who was on the cruise with his wife. When, asked, when he was asked how they were spending their time in the tiny little room in the ship, Vincent said this about his wife. She has excellent memories. She is able to bring up every transgression I have ever done. We can laugh at Vincent. But why marriage had problems this time when people were locked? It's because some of you have never lived with your wife for six hours. So here you are at six hours. What do we do? What do I do with a wife for six hours? See, nataa kuja nilale mapema. Muna kula unaenda unalala. So there are many people, and I know some of you listening to us, you know what I'm talking about. For the first time you have been told the many wrongs that you have done. When you missed the birthday, when you forgot her, 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 her anniversary, and so on and so forth. People remember the wrongs that have been done. Very few people remember the good. And we can laugh at that. In the book of Hebrews 10 and verse 17, the Bible says, There are sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. In other words, no wonder God does not even remember our sin to remind us. Although we are so messed up, God forgets our sins, but he remembers us. Oh, that is so good. In other words, God does not remember my sin, but he remembers me. He knows I'm still his child, even when I've fallen. The sins that I did, and there were many, he forgave me and forget, forgot them. So God knows me. He thinks about me. He thinks about you. We need to know that God is thinking about, tell yourself, God is thinking about me. Tell yourself like you believe, God is thinking about me. You see, the Bible says that God does not only think about us, he has a wonderful plan that he is planning for us. He has a wonderful plan that he is planning for us. So I get a good comfort to know that God is thinking about me, even when I'm not thinking about him. Many times I have said, Lord, what are you doing? Why is this happening? So much of life makes no sense. And you know, even at that position, God still thinks good things about me. God knows what you are thinking even now. Number two, God's thought towards us are good. Oh, tell yourself, God is thinking good about me. You know, sometimes you might have nobody to tell you. Maybe even today, nobody had, has told you you are smart. There is a young boy here, a young boy here. Every time he sees me, whether I'm what, he tells me, I like, I like, I like, I like the way you are dressed. You're smart. So today I came without a jacket, looked at me, said, you are smart. And you know, nobody else had told me anything the whole day today. But that boy over there, you are smart. You look good, pastor. And you are smart. In a machingi, in a pandanga, mbaka kichwa. I don't know whether somebody has told you, but it is good to tell each other, you look good. You know, in, in our G12, uh, one time we were reading a book and we, we, we discovered that one of the great things that you can ask one another is, how is your soul? And you remember I said in this church that uh, then I asked someone one day, I have not repeated one day, because God saved me from it. I said, how is your soul? He said, fine. How are the people in your soul? He said, fine. How is the church in your heart? He's fine. Then I said, how is your pocket? Then I remembered, oh my goodness. <laughs> you ask a Kenyan, how is your pocket? Blessed, blessed the name of the Lord. He said he's okay there. But I said, sit arudi atena. Mfuko wachana nayo, kana mfuko yako. Wakini roho ntakuuliza hiko na mnagani. Thoughts of peace. You know, we need to know what he is thinking. God is thinking. In this case, he makes it clear the kind of thought he says. Thoughts of peace, 
not of evil. Some translators here, like in, in, during the service, the translation I gave you, some of these translations are very good. English Standard Version says, plans for welfare and not for evil. That's what he's thinking about you. Welfare. He wants you to, 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 to enjoy life. In the message translation, he says, plans to take care of you, not to abandon you. You know, there are people who can take care of you just to abandon you and embarrass you, but God wants to take care of you and not to abandon you. New, New Living Translation. Plans for good and not for disaster. The plans that he has for me are good. He is thinking good about me. All his thoughts move towards one expected end. He wants the best of me. Every affliction is timed. Every affliction is measured. Think of it this way. There is a divine clock that is moving. No wonder Jeremiah says 29, 11, I know, I know, I know. And they were suffering at that time. But Jeremiah, God gives him this word to tell them. God has good plans. Listen to what he's saying. He says he knows. Oh, Jeremiah, do you know yesterday I was slapped by this man because I'm a slave? Jeremiah says, yes, I know he did, but God has better plans for that. He has good plans for you that one day they will not slap you. I have good plans for you. God has good plans for me. No wonder he's going to restore because he knows and he has good plan for me. Every affliction is timed and measured. And we will actually not understand even this verse now until some of this thing come to pass. Because these people are still slaves. But when God took them back from captivity, oh, were they not excited? Were they not rejoicing of what God has done? So in other words, you can tell the affliction that you are going through right now. Where is affliction? You are timed. Hey, you are timed. You affliction, you are measured. And when your measurement reaches, you will be done away with. It is God's way of saying, I still love you, even though you have blown it badly. I still love you even though coronavirus has hit you. I still love you even when you don't even think about me. I still have great plans for you even when corona is hitting this country. I think good about you. I have a future that starts from today. Not just 70 years from now, but it starts from here to eternity. Meaning even when they are in captivity, it was going to start there to eternity. God has good plans for me. Corona does not have to die for God to echo these words to me. We need in spite of it. God has good plans for me. He has good plans for you. God has good plans for us. God has good plans for me. God has good plans for you. Number three, which is actually the last. We know that what he tells us is true, but we forget it until life falls apart. You know, why do we say that verse many times is when things are not right? I know. I know the Lord has good plans for me. I know. But that time you are going under. You know, in the morning I said, a lot of times what we are trying to do is to have positive thinking. But I said positive thinking cannot help you. You need God's word in that positive thinking. You need God to push you. Not just to say things. You know, it's like saying, I know God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory, but you are still in your house. Get out. He will. He will bless the labors of your hand. You make use of your hands. He loves me. I am more valuable than the sparrows. But even the sparrows have to leave the nest to get out and get their food, although God takes care of them. 
Number three, God intends to give us a hope-filled future. To give you a future and a hope. To give you an expected end. You know, these guys were there, they were suffering, but God had the plan, good plans for them to take them out, to take them out and give them back their land. And I want to say that God has an appointment to end my suffering, to restore what the devil has stolen. God has that appointment. And nothing will hinder God's appointment. Nothing will hinder God reaching me and giving me an end that will honor him. Seventy years down the road, the same God who raised up a pagan king called Nebuchadnezzar. Oh, I don't know whether you understand this. God called Nebuchadnezzar, and I think one time I preached that sermon here. Nebuchadnezzar, my servant. And then I said, Osama bin Laden, my servant. Some of you can remember what I said that. Because you see, sometimes, even we might end up one day saying, Corona, thy servant. You know, there are some of us have, who have really prayed. Iki woga, ki woga. Ukipata kawa makadogo. Corona! Thy servant! Kukohoa kidogo. Sejui. Baka unakohoa, unajificha. Watu wasiji waka kutoroka. You know, we might get to a place. Corona! Thy servant! What has happened? God has pushed you. Has pushed you to know Corona can come to you anytime, anywhere, and you don't know who carries it. You know, I told the people in the service here, when AIDS came, we knew. Yeah, we were told, ukilala na holela holela hapa na pale dogo dogo na kubwa kubwa zote, unaweza pata yu ugonjwa. That's what we, 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 we knew. So what you do? Una avoid. Natukajua tu hospitali utu natu holela holela, unaka avoid kwa sabu shindana wakachomi. Kanaweza kuchoma na shidano ya mtu mkiri. Kwa hivyo unaangalia shidano. Ukija kuchoma. Excuse me, daktari, koja. Ebutuwa shidano nione? Dio. Hini yangu, eh? Fungua basi. Weka dawa. Siyo kukuta tu shidano imewekwa kwa mtungi ya teme chemushu wa maji. Pana. So, that one we knew. Lakini corona. Oh, my goodness. Inakuja ikiwa homa. Inakuja ikiwa maleria kari. Unakona temperature imekuchacha. Una, unaanza kutetemeka mchana. He, unaweka moto na bado unatetemeka. Yani inastua watu. Corona. Thy servant. Nebuchadnezzar was the servant of God. What he was going to do was to make sure these guys who had revolted against God came back to God by making sure life was made very difficult for them. Nebuchadnezzar, thy servant. And then God brings another pagan God. See what wameokoka. See what I want to pay Jesus. Another pagan god called Cyrus. Anakuja na assignment yake ni moja. Hawa watu uarudishe kwao. Hiyo tu. So it doesn't matter where I find myself. God has good plans for me. Amen. Whatever he is using, he can he still use the same to meet his perfect goal and aims that he has on, on me. That's why I'm saying corona can be used by God to do two things. One, for me to recover my strength, to recover my health, to recover my ability to serve God, to recover my, all the things that I have lost over the years. God can do that. And God can make sure when corona goes, my life never goes back to where it was before. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But let me try to explain what I'm saying. Why I see what was happening to the children of Israel in Babylon and the plans that God had for them. Why I think it is important. Until recently. Amen. I was wondering. Chupa. Zinategeneza wana nini. I never thought about that. Until recently. Nilikuwa na devu na nilikuwa ni meowa. Na nilikuwa na watoto. Until recently. You remember the other day I told you that he is my science. He is a new easy. 
Mimi hiyo vitu bwana hawabariki. Masantist, the Lord bless you. Sisi ni maartist. Sisi tunafanyaga art subjects. Hiyo hiyo hiyo. When people are going to form 6 uh, uh, wale wazee mko hapa. Anybody who wants to do mathematics, physics and chemistry, they were very proud. They would say something like this. Me I'm doing man power combination. I'm not joking with life. Sasa hiyo ni kutupiga sisi watu tunafanya CRA. Ni sawa tu. Ni sawa tu. So recently I discovered that glass is made from mchanga. Ah. Si nilijiona nikiwa duni sana mchanga. Na hiyo mchanga hata ingine nilijenga nayo. After they would use it up, a friend of mine anga niletea sukari. Ninajenga nayo. After imetumiwa ile waste. <laughs> waste. Ninaletea waste. <laughs> Na ukiona nyumba haina waste, nyumba imesimama. <laughs> But now this is what I discovered even after observing it is this. Ili hiyo iweze kuwa glass kuna moto moto na ni lazima moto uwe moto mkali na huo moto ukiuguza utakuchoma vibaya kwa hivyo lazima muwe na matongs ya kufanya hiyo kazi nayo muna choma inaanza kuwa liquid muna choma inakuwa nyekundu muna choma mnaweka makala zile mnataka kwa hiyo kitu alafu mnaweka kwa vitu za kutengeneza kama ni chupa ya Coca-Cola ama ni something else. Alafu zinaenda pole 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 zikisha malizika kuundika zinachomwa tena. Sasa so, unaweza uliza kwa nini zinachomwa tena? Zinachomwa tena sasa ili ziweze kuwa cured zizivunjike holera holera. Kiholera holera. Unajua kuna vitu vinavyojika kiholera holera. So a friend of mine was trying to tell me if you take it when it has not cured uchukue mbili tatu kabla hazijakuwa cured hata wewe mwenyewe ukiishika inaweza vunjika wewe mwenyewe kushika tu lakini ikienda kwa moto tena moto ingine ikitoka pale inastahamili bwana asifiwe watu wa Mungu Coca-Cola ya zamani wacha ya sasa Coca-Cola ya zamani ilikuwa ikianguka na ivunjiki na ikivunjika inavunjika kwa mrombo tu hamukujua mnaona hivyo yani <laughs> unaona chupa kameanguka kanavunjika mrombo tu sa <laughs> siju anyway i pray that god can help you to get what i got out of this that god has a business of trying to make sure that we will be stronger and we cannot break holela holela so there is fire that we have gone once but there is also another fire when i have already known who i am i go through another fire so that i can stand the temptation of time when israel went back they knew their god they knew their god they knew their god of abraham isaac and jacob they knew him even when they were scattered they knew him and if you go to israel today although si wanaomba hawa wa jamaa kuna 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 ukuta wanakaa tu na tukofia twao hawa marabi wanafanya fanya tu hivi hata si tulienda pale wanafanya fanya namna hii na hiyo ukuta imejaa makaratasi ya maombi because they when they came back and rebuilt the 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 the, 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 the temple again and the wall again they know there is a god And I know those guys have a god. Kainji kadogo. Unaweza kazunguka siku moja. Kaishe ep. Uzunguke ukiwa na gari uzunguke, utoke mpaka wa, wa Misri, uende baka gari hii. Uende baka uko ziwa. Kanaenda hivi. Na ni kadogo sana kwa sababu Bethlehem si Israeli. Bethlehem ni Palestini. Gaza si Israeli. Gaza ni Palestini. Kwa hivyo ni kadogo. 
Hey. Lakini hako kajama moto wa kuotea. If there is a place where there is security, ni uko. Na wata kuuliza maswali wakicheka cheka tu. Atulisema umeoa. Ulioa lini. Sani kibera naulizwa, kibera nasema. Ukisa, tena wanaendelea, tena wasema, and you said you got married. When was that? Na kajamaka na kuchekesha tu. Kuna mtu aliwachu wa mpakani kwa sababu hakuwa na pete. Na aliulizwa marakatha. Kwa hivyo mkaweka na pete. Kumbe kajamaka shao na pete ya kuna. Umkaweka pete. Oh. Anaendelea na ukona watoto. Eh? Na unava. And then, mulipo wana. Atuli, uliwekwa pete. Oh. Finally, akaulizwa. Na hiyo pete iko wapi? I thought it was funny. Pete ndiyo kitu. Ni kwa sababu wewe ulisema uliwekwa pete. Si yeye alikuuliza ni wewe ulisema. Kama ungesema ni, ni, ni yako. Lakini kama ulisema una watoto atakaa akaa akirudia. You said you have five children? The first one is how old? And then anakupeleka story. You also went to school. Which school did you? You know, to 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 to, to vitu tu kidogo kidogo tu. <laughs> Kwanza ukisema ulienda national youth service. Utaingia kwa sababu hiyo ni military. Hiyo ni military guy. Na huko umewambia ukipewa visa huku kwa huko pale watakuuliza maswali. Have you ever been trained in the military? You say no. Did you say national youth service? What does national youth service do? Unasema how are they trained? Unasema kaapo. <laughs> Utagoja watu wenu waende urudi. Anyway. What I'm trying to say is that the fire they got in Babylon the turning around that they got in Babylon, when God took them back, they knew and they were not ready to succumb to anything. Just like bottles on a, on a, on a heated place when they are being worked on so that every cock bottle, when it comes out, it will be strong that it cannot break so easily so that when you put a liquid, it will not break easily. Same thing to us. God is taking us through so that he can restore us. That's no wonder I know after this I will be stronger than I am. Ever increasing in hope. What should we say in response to all this? Our first and greatest need is to submit ourselves to our Heavenly Father and say very simply, Lord, see what is ahead. Even when all is dark here at me, See what is there ahead of me. You have my purpose. Even when my life seems not going in circles, I bow before you and say, Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In other words, you are saying, Yes, Lord. Niangalirietu. Niangalirietu. Kwa sabu unaona. Alice, you say mahivi. Sinivizuri kuboro from another preacher. Sema hivi ukienda Nairobi kutoka hapa. Kile kitu cha kwanza kuona hata sio cooperative bank na unajua iko. Na ukienda Nairobi utaiona. Si iko hapa zima man. Kini ukitoka hapa utaiona. Utaona zamani tulikuwa tukisema utaona mudhuri wa makara. Oh pale kwa kona. Ukifika mzee kwa makara ukipanduka hivyo utaona kamlima pale SCNDS. Ukifika SCNDS ukikata ndio utaona cooperative. So you don't you don't see Nairobi. But Nairobi gets closer as you go towards it. May God gives us faith to know there is a place we are going and the more we get closer it becomes clearer for us. Let me say this, we are not going to heaven by a lift, but we are going to heaven by stairs. Make sure that every stair you are climbing up, you are enjoying yourself. Unajua shida kubwa jameni. Tunataka kufika binguna try ku enjoy. Me, I want to enjoy before I get to heaven. I want to enjoy. In light then of this verse, our possession should be one of ever increasing hope in the Lord. 
I admit that it is hard when you see your child succumb to cancer and die. When you see your marriage having problems and people asking for divorce. Yes. You, I know it becomes difficult when you have lost your job. I know. We live in a foreign world. I know. COVID has come. I know. And we are scared. Yes. But this verse for it to have a meaning to us. When we read it, then my sorrow and pain disappears. Why? I know. God is thinking about me. We cannot escape the troubles of life, but God thinks about me. Are there Christians suffering? Yes, but God is thinking about them. Christians in India and Sudan are suffering? Yes, but God is thinking about them. And these are our brothers and sisters. But something good that I know, and it is so powerful also when I think about this verse, is that one day my Savior and my God will put the things that scares me under his feet, and that is sin and death will be put under his feet. He will utterly destroy them, both of them, sin and death. So in whatever situation you find yourself, God wants you to know he knows and he's thinking about you. He knows you're in captivity, but restoration is coming. It came for the children of Israel. It also come to you. He knows you have lost a job, but he's going to provide another. He knows your business is not doing well. He knows. Let's all stand.